Many women experience suffering in menopause from uh, things like hot flashes and night sweats to the point where they consider trying hormone replacement therapy, but might be afraid because they've heard that there's a possible risk of increased breast cancer. If this is you, stay tuned because we're going to be covering all about this and whether or not you should actually be afraid of having breast cancer as a result of hormone replacement therapy. Hello and welcome to the Wild Wisdom Show. I'm Dr. Patricia Mills and I'm your host, a medical doctor with a different spin on women's health. And I'm a specialist in physical medicine rehabilitation and practicing functional medicine. I love to take complicated science and break it down into easy to understand information with actionable strategies that you can start implementing right away for immediate results. And today we're going to be talking about is hormone replacement therapy in menopause safe? Specifically, what about the risk of breast cancer? So first, we're going to cover a few basic concepts about hormone replacement therapy so that we're all on the same page when I use that term. So hormone replacement therapy, or HRT as it's commonly called, is the use of estrogen, progesterone, testosterone, or even DHEA to improve hormone levels in the body. And in menopause, you know, specifically as we transition from our fertile years into our menopause and beyond, our natural levels of estrogen and progesterone, testosterone, and DHEA can go down. And that can be experienced uh, in a negative way by many women, creating issues such as hot flashes and night sweats, vaginal dryness decreased libido, uh, it can result in osteoporosis, and many women are not satisfied with experiencing that in severe degrees in their life. You know, it can be mild, but for many of us, it's extremely severe and very bothersome. And women, therefore, turn to uh, options such as hormone replacement therapy to see if they can improve the experiencing by the experience by topping up the levels of these hormones in the body, particularly estrogen and progesterone. And what you need to know is that hormone replacement therapy can be bioidentical or non-bioidentical. And I'm going to explain this a little bit because this is important for the conversation that we're going to have about the risk of breast cancer with hormone replacement therapy. So uh, conventional hormone replacement therapy is the therapy that is commonly prescribed by most Western uh, trained doctors. So they are more likely to prescribe um, hormones like Premarin, which is made from pregnant, years, uh, pregnant mare's urine, and Progestin, which is a synthetic progesterone that actually does not look like our own progesterone. So the pregnant, the pregnant mare's urine or Premarin and the synthetic progesterone, which is usually called Progestin, uh, do not look exactly like our hormones. So they are not bioidentical. Uh, so what research is showing is that these hormones work similar to, but not exactly like our own hormones. And that difference could be important, as we will discover. Bioidentical hormone therapy, on the other hand, uh, is meant to be hormones that look exactly like our hormones. So, for example, we have three different kinds of estrogens, estradiol, estrone, and estriol. And estradiol is a commonly prescribed one as well as estriol. And what they do, bioidentical hormone therapists use things like estradiol that look exactly like our estrogen in hormone replacement therapy. And the same thing for progesterone. There are formulations of bioidentical progesterone available that look exactly like our progesterone. So these have, as far as research can tell so far, have similar effects in our body as our own hormones. And so these hormones can be given in different ways. They can be given as a pill. Um, so, for example, the oral contraceptive pill is a commonly known one for women who have want to either prevent pregnancy or are having problems with their menstrual cycles and are prescribed the, the pill as a result. It can be given as a troche, which is like a lozenge that is put into the cheek and dissolves there over time. 
It can be given on the skin or topically, such as a cream or a patch. It can be given vaginally. It can be injected into the skin, like underneath the skin, or even a pellet with that uh, hormone can be inserted under the skin, and then it slowly releases the hormone over time. Now, what you need to know is that the U.S. Food and Drug Administration and Health Canada have approved estrogen and estrogen plus progestin for the treatment of menopausal symptoms such as hot flashes, night sweats, vaginal dryness, and in some cases, the prevention of osteoporosis. Osteoporosis in women is partly due to that withdrawal of estrogen and progesterone as we age, causing an increased risk of things like osteoporosis. So in some cases, it is indicated for prevention of that. The thing is that the concern about the risk of breast cancer with hormone replacement therapy was raised when they did the Women's Health Initiative study that started in 1991. So it's called the WHI for short. And it was a huge study run in 40 U.S. centers. Over 26,000 healthy postmenopausal women participated in the study. And when they designed the study, uh, they did it with the expectation that they would find significant benefits, not just in menopausal symptoms, but also in prevention of cardiovascular disease and, and osteoporosis and dementia, because that's what had been noticed in other smaller trials. There were studies done, um, smaller studies that were being done that were observational, observing that when women were on hormone replacement therapy, they generally were doing better than women who were not. And so they wanted to run the study to prove this. And instead, what they found was that there were significant negative effects uh, that were identified. However, what I'm going to get into with you is that when they did follow-up studies to this uh, large study, so on the same population of women, over 26,000 women, when they followed them over the long term, they actually discovered that what they initially were finding in terms of risks with hormone replacement therapy were not the case. They, that was not meant to be um, they basically, the principal investigator of, of those studies, one of the has gone on record saying that the results were uh, unfortunately misused in terms of making people scared of hormone replacement therapy. So we are going to get into that. And before I do, I want to just give a shout out to my uh, women's, my free Facebook group for women called Wild Wisdom for Women with Dr. Patricia Mills. If you're a member, you can join live. And I see I have some live viewers joining me today. And if you can, you can put in your name and where you're joining me from so I can give you a shout out. And also you can put in your questions. My recommendation is putting them, put them in early as there is sometimes a delay. And I don't want to miss your questions by the end of this very important important episode. So thank you again for joining. So let's get into this study that raised concerns about the potential risk of breast cancer with hormone replacement therapy in menopause. So the WHI study had two groups, one receiving non-bioidentical estrogen. Uh, so those are the ones who did not, did not have a uterus. So they said, well, you don't have a uterus, so you don't need the progesterone. That's a topic for another conversation. But just so you know, that was the decision making of who got progesterone and who didn't. And the other group received non-bioidentical progesterone, progestin and, and estrogen. So they, they had two groups, one group received estrogen, the other group received estrogen and progesterone, and both of these were non-bioidentical formulations of estrogen and progesterone, which in my opinion is important and research is showing that um, that is you know, an interesting distinction to make. By about five years into the study, they started to notice some um, problems that were showing up in the woman in the study. And initial analysis was, um, showed an up to 26, it was between 24 and 26% increased risk of breast cancer in the woman uh, receiving the hormone replacement therapy. And there was a placebo group that was, um, that was being compared against. So placebo is when people are receiving kind of like a sugar pill. So it's a um, pill that looks exactly like the hormone therapy, but didn't have any hormone in it. 
And in the study, they used a pill. They did not use a cream or an injection or a vaginal application. It was the pill. And I see here I have Eliana Ramos joining from Burlington. Hello, and thank you for saying hi and putting in your name. It's lovely to have you here, Eliana. Now, what's interesting to, to know is that when this uh, finding came out, um, as a result of this and other concerns, um, they actually stopped one um, part portion of the study. And uh, it was a big time, uh, you know, a big uh, change in the history of hormone replacement therapy, because up until then, hormone replacement therapy was being prescribed by many doctors for menopausal symptoms. But after that initial statistical finding, uh, many doctors stopped prescribing HRT and many women stopped taking it. There was about a 70 to 80 percent decrease in the use of HRT uh, as a result of this. And the thing is that subsequent research showed that it was um, an over exaggeration uh, that occurred with the statistics. And we're going to go into exactly why. And part of the understanding of this comes from a follow-up study that was done by um, the WHI investigators themselves, and they published it in uh, the uh, JAMA, article, uh, JAMA journal in 2020, so pretty recently. And this is a 20-year follow-up study. So they followed up these women for 20 years, and this is what they found. And what they found was that for the woman who had been receiving estrogen alone, these women actually had a 20% decreased diagnosis of breast cancer. So they were less likely to get breast cancer than the placebo group, the group not receiving hormone replacement therapy. And over 20 years, they had a 40% decrease risk of dying from breast cancer. So you could even say that estrogen, the estrogen therapy, even though it wasn't even bioidentical, it was a non-bioidentical estrogen therapy, was protective against breast cancer. That is what this is suggesting. The other interesting finding is that when they looked at the women in the placebo group, so the women who didn't even receive hormone replacement therapy, when, these, when women were recruited into the study, they could be recruited into the study whether they had used hormone replacement therapy in the past or not. However, if they went into placebo group, they would then from that point onwards not receive hormone replacement therapy. So the placebo group consisted of women who had previously been on HRT and women who had not been on HRT in the past. And what they found is that when they looked at that group of women in the placebo group, the women who had previously been on HRT over a 20 year period had a decreased risk of being diagnosed with breast cancer. So again, another finger pointing towards um, the probability that HRT, when given appropriately in the right kind of HRT, could be protective against breast cancer. So what about that increased risk of breast cancer that was found in that in the WHI study that caused them to even stop a portion of the study five years into, into the study. And that was that in the group that was receiving, receiving the non-bioidentical progesterone and estrogen, there was an increased risk of cancer. And it was on the order of about one more case of breast cancer diagnosis per 1,000 women. Specifically, if they looked at 10,000 women, in the placebo group, there were 30 diagnoses of breast cancer, and in the estrogen plus progesterone group, there was 38 cases. So there was still breast cancer being diagnosed in the non-HRT group, of course, you know, as one would expect, and there was a slightly increased risk, um, and it's that the absolute risk went from um, 30 to 38 women within a, tenth, a, a group of 10,000 women. So 38 cases of breast cancer in 10,000 women and, who received uh, hormone repl replacement therapy and 30 cases of breast cancer in 10,000 women who did not, who received placebo. So that was very interesting because it put into context that it was probably the progesterone that was causing the, the non-bioidentical progesterone 
appeared to be the hormone that was causing the increased risk of diagnosis of breast cancer. And then if you look at that even more closely, there was another study that looked at the woman who developed breast cancer while, uh, you know, so while on hormone replacement therapy and compared it to women who developed breast cancer who are not on hormone replacement therapy. And the very, very interesting thing that this study found that was published in 2008 was that those diagnosed with breast cancer uh, after they had been using progesterone and estrogen or a combination of both actually had better outcomes. So they were less likely to die from their breast cancer. So even though women were more likely, were slightly more likely to be diagnosed with breast cancer after using hormone replacement therapy, the women who did get breast cancer did better. They didn't die as often from their breast cancer as women who did not receive hormone replacement therapy and then be diagnosed with breast cancer. And this was actually interesting because the study was a five-year follow-up. So they were looking at women for five years after that diagnosis of breast cancer. And what's interesting is that the, um, the WHI study was stopped within five years because that's when they started seeing that increased incidence of breast cancer. So it's a pretty good follow-up study in terms of time to show that um, the breast cancer mortality was less in women previously using HRT compared to those who did not. As a result of all of this, um, so as a result of the WHI study, the long-term consequence uh, was multifold. So first of all, women who had been deriving benefits from HRT and stopped it, um, you know, lost an opportunity to use HRT to treat the suffering of hot flashes and night sweats, vaginal dryness, and all those things that menopause can bring for some women. Um, as a result, the non-bioidentical progesterone, which is specifically called medroxyprogesterone acetate or MPA, fell out of favor, which is a good thing. There were definitely some potential issues with that synthetic progesterone. And, uh, P, you know, clinicians who continue to prescribe hormone replacement therapy turn towards bioidentical progesterone, uh, and specifically the pill was a micronized bioidentical progesterone because I was better absorbed and broken down by the body. And so, uh, and they also started to use uh, more frequently things like creams, um, patches, and vaginal applications like IUD progesterone, intrauterine device coated uh, progesterones. So, there was a significant change in the practice of hormone replacement therapy prescription. And part of that was a positive shift, you know, shifting away from non-bioidentical progesterone to bioidentical progesterone. And part of it was a negative shift in terms of people being afraid of the risk of breast cancer, even though the long-term studies are showing that that potentially is not something that we have to be worried about. And in particular, with the fact that now, um, you know, you have easier access to clinicians who are prescribing the bioidentical progesterone and a large systematic review. So a large review of multiple studies using bioidentical micronized progesterone that was published in 2018 showed that there is no increased risk of breast cancer use uh, uh, up to five years of use. And again, that is very um, encouraging because the uh, the WHI trials showed increased risk of breast cancer within that five-year range with the synthetic progesterone. So clearly, synthetic progesterone is different from bioidentical progesterone in terms of the effects on the body and the risks of breast cancer. And that has been shown in what's called, you know, in vitro studies as well. That synthetic progesterone definitely has different effects on breast cancer tissue compared to bioidentical progesterone, which is actually actually protective uh, with respect to breast cancer in those in vitro studies, looking at how um, progesterone, bioidentical progesterone affects breast cancer cells. So there's a few take home messages that I want you to have here. And then we're going to talk about when is the best time to use hormone replacement therapy. And should you be using hormone replacement, replacement therapy if you have a family history of breast cancer, or if you yourself have had or have breast cancer. 
And again, if you're watching live, this is a really good time to start putting any questions that you may have so that I don't miss it at the end of the episode. So take home message number one, use of estrogen alone for menopausal hormone replacement therapy does not increase the risk of breast cancer. In fact, it may decrease your risk of being diagnosed with breast cancer by about 20%. And if you do get breast cancer, it may decrease your risk of death from that cancer by about 40% compared to not being on hormone replacement therapy. And that's within a period of 20 year follow up studies. So it's a very high quality study indicating these statistics. Take home message number two use of non bioidentical progestin medroxyprogesterone acetate or MPA increases the risk of breast cancer by one in 1,000 women who take it. However, it may decrease your risk of death from breast cancer if you are on this before you are diagnosed with breast cancer. However, there are much better options than MPA available in the form of bioidentical progesterone, which actually appear to be protective against breast cancer. So in my opinion, and in the opinion of many clinicians who prescribe hormone replacement therapy, just don't use the synthetic progesterones, use the bioidentical progesterone. They appear to be much safer, much better tolerated, and even potentially more effective, although that hasn't been specifically studied, but they are effective in the treatment of menopausal uh, symptoms like hot flashes, um, night sweats, vaginal dryness, uh, and all those sorts of things. Take home message number three, Use of bioidentical progesterone does not appear to increase the risk of breast cancer. And studies show that it may even be protective. So this is really great news if you find yourself in a situation of needing to or wanting to take hormone replacement therapy and progesterone is indicated for your condition. So let's say that you have a family history of breast cancer. Um, if you are, uh, if you yourself don't have breast cancer and it's, it's a family history that you have, definitely talk to your doctor. And when you connect with the hormone replacement therapist uh, experience with bioidentical hormone th- uh, therapy, definitely tell them about it. So you can talk about a risk benefit, um, you know, discussion. Now it looks like uh, it, it is probably okay to be on it. However, you do have to very closely monitor it. And you want to be very upfront with your doctors about it in terms of deciding or whether or not you want to start. But it does not, it is not currently a contraindication as in you can be prescribed HRT therapy if you have a family history of breast cancer. Same thing for if you have had breast cancer, um, you know, and it's, and it's gone now, it's been treated, um, you can be on it. However, you have to be even more careful and even more conscientious with your hormone replacement therapist. And definitely, I would recommend sticking with the bioidentical hormone therapies uh, because they appear to be more safer, be, appear to be safer in this regard. Now, if you have a history of breast cancer and you have not been on hormone replacement therapy in the past and you want to start it, you should have, I highly recommend, in fact, I would say that this is 100% necessary, have your cancer specialist as part of your team and uh, in the conversation alongside with your hormone replacement therapist. Because there are cases in which um, hormone replacement therapy are used in breast cancer therapy. However, these cases are very specific. you, You know, we have to consider each case uniquely. And this is something that you want to do very carefully with really good follow-up and extremely good care and coordinated care from your healthcare team. So just so you're aware, it could potentially be an option, but you really have to have your cancer specialist and your hormone replacement therapist um, who are, they're usually not the same people. Usually you need to have someone who is very experienced in bioidentical hormone therapy um, prescribing and following you along. And then there's your cancer specialist who is assisting you specifically with your breast cancer. And those two should be working together ideally. Now we're going to talk about the best time to start hormone replacement therapy because there is uh, a golden window of opportunity um, for other potential benefits. And I have here a question from a Facebook user. 
What are examples of bioidentical progesterone currently using Prometrium? Yes, so uh, there are different examples. Rather than talking about brand names, I like to talk about different kinds. So you can use an oral micronized progesterone pill. Uh, you can also have a progesterone cream, which is compounded, as in the pharmacy puts it together, and it can be different doses in the cream. It can be injected and it can be placed intravaginally, so putting it in as a vaginal suppository. And that really depends on the uh, hormone therapist that you are working with and what who they have access to in terms of pharmacies. There are online companies who also um, you know, provide you with these um, a potential um, uh, prescriptions and medications, and it will really depend on what they have access to and what the pharmacy is able to put together. But essentially with the compounding in pharmacies, they can create different doses um, in different uh, bases. And even within the creams, um, you can have it within like different creams like coconut oil or emulsifiers. Uh, you know, there's lots of different options. So um, Prometrium, as far as I recall, is a, um, my, a micronized, bioidentical micronized progesterone. So, and that you take that orally. And the thing with orally versus transdermally is that they do have different effects. When you take progesterone orally, it gets broken down by the liver and the breakdown products can cause you to be um, a little bit calm and maybe even sleepy. So if you have a hard time sleeping, um, taking, um, you know, oral micronized progesterone at night can actually be quite helpful. But if you don't have that problem, um, and really what you're looking to treat are things like menstrual irregularities or topping up your progesterone from menopause, then it appears that the transdermal, like the topical creams, um, could be better or vaginal creams could be better because you can use lower doses with those because it does not get absorbed into the gut and then goes into the liver. It bypasses the liver. It does not go into the liver. It goes straight into the bloodstream through the skin. And so it has a different kind of effect on the body. And that's something that you want to talk about with your um, hormone um, therapist as well. So great, great question. So the best time to start HRT is within 10 years of menopause. So it's interesting because what the WHI study, um, when they initially, when they started to really look into the data, you know, um, you know, once they got the results and they're really digging into the results, when they divided the groups into women who were within 10 years of menopause, so they had stopped menstruating for at least a year, that's the diagnosis of menopause. Um, and within 10 years of that, if they were started in, on HRT, the risks were much lower and there even appeared to be benefits in terms of potential decreased risk of cardiovascular disease, potential decreased risk of dementia. And that's shown up in other studies um, looking at HRT therapy, that golden window of opportunity uh, it appears to be within about five to 10 years of menopause. When HRT was started more than 10 years after menopause um, with these conventional um, non-bioidentical estrogen and progesterones, there appeared to be less benefits and more potential increased risks such as increased risk of dementia, increased risk of um, heart disease and um, clots. So it really matters in terms of starting hormone replacement therapy. Uh, the timing is important. And if you want the most benefits with the least risks, uh, you wanna start it within 10 years of experiencing menopause. And it's interesting because recent large studies, cohort studies are when they take a group of people and observe them over time. So it's not a controlled trial like the WHI study where they had a placebo group where you know they get to they randomize the woman into two groups of receiving and not receiving therapy. This is looking simply at women who are receiving therapy. And it appears as though the problem with starting it later is that you've had about 10 years of not enough estrogen and progesterone. And it could be that it's simply too much time without those hormones. And then starting up the hormone replacement therapy after that simply doesn't give you the same amount of benefits as providing your body with less time 
um, of, you know, of not having enough estrogen and progesterone. So the hormone replacement therapy basically gives your body estrogen and progesterone that it's missing as a result of going into menopause and the missing of those hormones um, could, uh, for too long, it could set your body up like it's just too late. You know, the horse is out of the barn, so to speak. Um, and interestingly, with the bioidentical hormone therapy, more recent research is showing that it could be beneficial to start even after the 10 years, but that still needs to be studied in more depth. So in conclusion, if you are suffering from menopausal symptoms, like hot flashes, night sweats, vaginal dryness, or you want to prevent osteoporosis, then it is worth connecting with a clinician prescribing bioidentical hormone therapy. Have the conversation, talk about your family history and your personal history so they can talk about the risks and benefits. Ideally do this within 10 years of menopause, although if you are more than 10 years post-menopause and you're having problems uh, with these symptoms or problems with sleep, you know, and things that happen um, in menopause as we age that can get more and more difficult as a result of the, that lack of hormones, connect with a bioidentical hormone replacement therapist anyways, because more recent studies in very large groups of women who started hormone replacement therapy even 10 years after menopause, as long as it was bioidentical, there appears to be some benefit, although the benefit isn't as big um, compared to if you started it within those 10 years. And also those studies are showing that once you start bioidentical hormone replacement therapy, especially if it's within those 10 years, and if it's bioidentical, you can actually continue it safely for the long term with potential benefits as a result. That is a topic for another conversation, um, you know, but I hope that what I've answered here today is that if you're concerned specifically around hormone replacement therapy is the risk of breast cancer, uh, research is, is showing that that actually is not something that you have to necessarily be worried about unless you have breast cancer, in which case, you know, you need to be very careful with what you're doing with your hormones and what kind of breast cancer it is, if it's estrogen, you know, um, positive receptors or not, that really, you know, will influence the decision and the discussion. But if you do not have a personal history of breast cancer, then using hormone replacement therapy does not appear to increase your risk of uh, dying from breast cancer or being diagnosed with breast cancer so long as you are not using synthetic progesterone as part of your therapy. So I hope that this was helpful and I look forward to seeing you in the next Wild Wisdom show. Share, save, and subscribe if you found this helpful. And I hope you have a lovely evening, day, or night, depending on when you catch this. Goodbye.